Hello, my name is Jackie Fish. Creative Assembly have asked me to make this video to keep you informed on the changes coming to Warhammer Total War in the Old World update. The Old World has changed since the release of Total War Warhammer, with a whole range of new legendary lords, races, sub-factions and units entering the ongoing struggle. As a result of this, many of the original legendary lords and factions have lost their unique feel or have simply fell out of place. To address this, Creative Assembly are going to be deploying the Old World update, which looks to fix these issues by adding changes to the Warriors of Chaos, Empire, providing new unique followers for the Wood Elves as well as new lore inspired skill trees for 10 of the original legendary lords and additional campaign effects. In this patch, the Warriors of Chaos have received design changes, with the focus being on making it easier to vassalize the Norskan tribes, so that you can focus on the destructive crusade for the old world. Awakened tribes will now become your vassals instead of your allies after defeating them, with personality adjustments making them much more loyal, as well as them paying a small amount of their income to their new overlords. By defeating a Norskan faction leader in battle, you make them much more susceptible to becoming your vassal, as you have shown that you are top dog in the icy wastelands. Another notable change for Chaos is that encamped forces now have a greater upkeep reduction, meaning that in many cases, maxed out hordes can now become somewhat self-sustained this, alongside the Chaos Tech Tree now providing replenishment bonuses, should create more campaign momentum and allow Chaos to focus towards the old world's end. Deep in the forest, the Wood Elves are also getting some much requested love in this patch, with new followers such as the Amblesmith, which provide 20 more armor but slow down the Lord's campaign movement speed by 3% as you parade around in your new heavy shiny armor, and the Young Stag Follower, which provides plus 5 leadership to the Lord's army. This should hopefully make the campaign feel more unique to the Wood Elves as you descend upon the old world. The Empire AI has struggled to make it to the end game since launch, with roaming greenskin incursions, vampiric armies, and being the first line of defense against the armies of Chaos just proving too much for them to handle the majority of the time. To give them a helping hand, they will now have a complete province originally held by the Empire Successionists at the beginning of the game, containing Helmgart, Ilhart, Grunberg and of course Altdorf. The aim with these changes to the Empire AI will hopefully provide them with a stronger economy and a stable kingdom. This coupled with the skill tree changes and the campaign effect changes to Kolfranz and Belthazar Gelt will hopefully provide them with a fighting chance as they make their way into the late game. Do note these changes are for the AI and not for a player controlled empire. 12 of the older legendary lords are getting new permanent campaign effects which should help to reinforce the character's playstyle and give them more of a personality. For example, when Cole Franz recruits a new lord, they start off at level 3 instead of level 1. This alongside his new skill tree that we will look at in a second will help to show why he is the emperor. Another interesting new campaign effect is Ungrim Iron Fist for Slayer Kings. He has now increased the speed of all his forces faction wide by 10%, allowing his dwarfs to get into combat that little bit faster, or the ability to maneuver his iron new box around the battlefield. Azag the Slaughterant now has a research rate increase to his faction showing that not all orcs are stupid, and Grimgor Ironhide now no longer loses fightiness whilst in enemy territory. Meanwhile, my personal favourite is Archeon the Everchosen, who now suffers negative diplomatic relations with all factions, but hey, you don't need friends if you're going to burn everything in your path. Also entering Total War Warhammer this patch are 10 new lore inspired legendary lord skill trees, which look to improve both the campaign and battle aspects of these characters, as well as give more personality to them, much like the campaign effects. Heinrich Kimmler's new skill tree is very interesting, as it is devoted to improving Krell. With abilities such as Undying Guardian which halves the speed at which Krell degrades, and Black Axe which gives Krell 5 melee attack and 10 charge bonus. The ultimate goal for this skill tree is to reach Eternal Bastion, which causes Krell to no longer degrade during battle at all, making him a permanent summon on the battlefield unless killed. In addition to this, all Master Necromancers who serve under Kemlar now get two new tier 3 skills like Lord of the Scourge, which now provide a reduction in attrition for the Lord's army, as well as giving bonuses to casualty replenishment, making the Master Necromancer more adept at leading their putrid hordes. 
Finally, some unit tweaks are also coming alongside this patch, with changes such as every variant of the Minotaur getting a reduction in cost for both multiplayer and campaign, and the Dwarven Cannon and Bolt Thrower receiving an increase to their damage versus large. Make sure to check out the rest of the patch notes to find out more about the Old World update, as well as the bug fixes coming alongside it. Let Creative Assembly know what your favourite patch change was in the comments down below and on the forums. Best of luck conquering the Old World in the latest update.